Welcome to Car and Driver. I'm Carlos Lago, and that is the Tesla Model S Plaid. Now, in talking about the Plaid, which is currently the quickest accelerating four-door that you can buy from a manufacturer, you have to consider, though, its relationship with Tesla. This is ultimately the expression of the brand currently, and that makes it a very complicated thing to talk about. Now, both because of the vast array of technology and features inside this car, but also because of how polarizing the topic of Tesla is online. I'll say at the outset that I think this is a very cool car with a lot of amazing things to offer, but it's not without significant downsides. But let's start with the basics. The Model S is a five seat large four door that first went on sale in 2012, and it has received continual updates and improvements over the years. Currently, this Plaid is the highest performing version of the Model S, and it also, as of the time of this recording, serves as the flagship for Tesla. It costs a hair over $130,000 to start. It offers just over 1,000 horsepower and has an advertised range between 350 and 400 miles, depending on the wheel options. Now, when you consider all that stuff, the closest EV competitors are the highest performing versions of the Porsche Taycan and the Lucid Air. But in terms of acceleration, the closest competitors are Superbikes and the Bugatti Chiron. To evaluate this car, we rented it from a third party that specializes in supplying vehicles for purposes like this for the price of a few thousand dollars. We then subjected the Plaid to Car and Driver's battery of instrumented testing, including a top speed run. But how do those acceleration claims work in the real world? Well, I have to first start by saying that Car and Driver tests at an automaker's proving grounds, and we're not allowed to bring cameras there yet. But hey, we're throwing this video together in my first week on this job in Michigan, so bear with us. We're still trying to figure things out. Let's talk about the acceleration results. We recorded zero to 60 in 2.1 seconds with rollout and the quarter mile in 9.4 seconds at 151 miles an hour. Now that latter result actually ties the Bugatti Chiron. You know that $3 million, 261 mile an hour supercar, ultra car, hypercar, whatever you want to call it. And that means that this Plaid is tied for the quickest accelerating car to the quarter mile that Car and Driver has ever tested. But the Plaid is actually crazier than that. It took it 0.9 seconds to go from 30 to 50 miles an hour and one second to go to 50 to 70 miles an hour. That is the quickest we've ever recorded and more than twice as quick as the Bugatti. Twice! And what's even better is that the Plaid repeats this acceleration over and over and over again. It used to be that when we tested the Model S performance, you couldn't do two back-to-back -back acceleration runs without seeing major power loss. Tesla's clearly made a lot of significant updates like having a radiator that's twice as large and it all appears to work. This Plaid is a preposterously quick car. But what's that like when you're actually driving it? When you just slow down and actually take it on real roads? Well, it just becomes like a normal Model S, much like any over-endowed, hyper-powerful vehicle does these days. When you keep your foot out of the go pedal, I can't say gas pedal, it's just a normal, nice vehicle. And when you think about the ride and the steering when you're just cruising along the freeway like we are now, it's a very pleasant thing. And even the yoke works then. But when you punch it, It's just absurd. It's just absurd. It has the acceleration that you would never expect 
from frankly any kind of vehicle. And the same is too for the handling. At our test track, we recorded around the skid pad 1.08 G average. That's staggering for a vehicle that weighs over 5,000 pounds. And it's on decent Michelins, but not the stickiest Michelins tires. That's a good performance for a sports car. That's an incredible performance for this sedan. Unfortunately, there are two things holding it back. Okay, we gotta talk about the yoke. Yes, it's weird, yes, it's a bit silly, and yes, it's something you could probably learn to live with every day, even though there's no rim up here. I still have trouble with the touch sensitive steering wheel controls and I'm always accidentally turning on the windshield wipers when I don't mean to or flashing the uh, turn signals. Turn off, please. Okay, so that can be frustrating, but more so is the way the steering feel works. It's not great around corners when you're trying to drive dynamically and so too is the lack of, or the inability to turn off the stability control system. It's such that we really couldn't notice a difference or notice a benefit from the advertised torque vectoring because a stability control intervention cuts in well before you could get to that point. But back to steering again. This car does 162 miles an hour really quickly and that's its top speed. We'll talk about the 200 mile an hour claim later. But even at 150, the steering is so light, the vehicle wanders, it just doesn't feel stable. And that's an experience that you don't get in cars like the Porsche Taycan. And yeah, that's 150 miles an hour, but look, this car can do it. You expect it to be developed to do that in a way that feels good and stable, and it just isn't. Car and driver's braking test for all vehicles is five back-to-back -back stops down one length of a one and a half mile straightaway, and then a six stop at the end coming the other way. That allows for some cool down time to see how the braking system handles the stress. As for the Plaid's braking performance, the stopping distances didn't degrade significantly during this testing process, but the brakes got extraordinarily hot. They produced a ton of odor and there was actually a warning light that came on the dash. We highlight this because every other vehicle that you can buy that goes this fast has better braking performance and you should expect more from a car that goes this fast. Let's shift the conversation over to range and charging because both are significant for the Plaid and Tesla overall. Now, a bit first about car and driver testing. We subject all EVs to a real world range test at a constant 75 mile an hour freeway speed because we believe that long distance freeway driving is where range matters more than cruising around in a city where you always have a charger available. Now these results are always gonna be lower than the EPA range ratings because those ratings also factor in city driving. So with all that preamble out of the way, how did the Plaid do? Well, it got 280 miles on a single charge, which is a really good result considering its additional performance, stickier tires, and additional electric motor. In fact, it's the second highest range we've recorded from an EV, the first being the more, let's say, efficiency-minded Model S long range. Now charging actually leads us pretty conveniently to the Tesla supercharger network, which to date is the best across the US, both for the number of stations available, the consistency and experience of actually using each charging station. It's, it's great, but that gets a little besides the point. When testing charging, car and driver does a fill from 10% to 90% on every EV. And it took the Plaid 38 minutes to accomplish that fill, which is nine minutes faster than the Model S long range. And even more impressively, it averaged 125 kilowatt of a charging rate over that period of time, which is the most of any EV we've tested. Even more impressively, the first five minutes of that charge were a steady 250 kilowatt. So there's a lot of really capable charging technology going on inside this Plaid. Talking about Tesla's interior, there's not a lot going on in terms of design because really the story is in the screens. And that may be deserved considering how well these screens work. In my mind, they are industry leading when it comes to response and clarity and just appearance. User friendliness is a different story. You know, for example, like adjusting the, the vents like this always feels kind of dumb and overcomplicated, but that's, I'm getting beyond the point. 
What matters most about these screens is the depth of features within them. Everything from like Netflix to video games to all these features that get added and updated continuously. And that's the most impressive part about not just the Plaid, but all Teslas, that they're willing to just keep making these radical new changes in these vehicles and deliver them to your car wirelessly. That's an uncommon, super new thing in the automotive space. And as a result, it makes ownership of these vehicles way more interesting too. You're no longer just buying a car and that's it forever. This gets updated with new cool stuff over time and radical new stuff too. Stuff that you wouldn't expect to find in a new car. But think about the GMC Hummer EV. It has an acceleration mode called Watts to Freedom, a WTF acceleration mode. That's cool, but think about how many meetings had to happen at GM in order to allow that mode to exist. Not only does Tesla have a plaid version of its car, but it also, all Teslas can make fart noises. It's so far and away different and I love it. Past the steering and the brakes, what are the other downsides? Well, that brings us to the topic of Tesla as an automaker. And Tesla's accomplished a lot of things in its very short existence relative to other traditional automakers. And that gives it a lot of goodwill to its most diehard fans. I believe though, its accomplishments are overshadowed by a long list of broken promises. Take, for example, having one million robo-taxis on the road. Take, for example, the Tesla semi-truck. Take, for example, battery swap stations or force full self-driving timelines. Then there's this car, this Plaid. Tesla's website says it'll do 200 miles an hour, and it has the hardware to do that speed. It's got the carbon sleeved rotors on its electric motors that allow them to spin up to 20,000 RPM. It has the $4,500 wheel and tire package, but it doesn't have the software update yet. Tesla says it's coming eventually, and we hope it does, but it's not here yet, so it can't do 200 miles an hour. And that brings us to the concept of Tesla and what people are spending their money on when they buy Tesla products. It's easy to believe that because Tesla's accomplished so much that it will also accomplish whatever it says it will. History has shown that isn't always the case. So when you're buying one of these, you gotta make sure that you're buying the car as it is right now and not what it might be in the future. Because if you're buying something that might exist in the future, you're buying into hype and the return on hype often isn't very good. Let's be clear. The Model S Plaid is a rocket ship from the future. That an American made EV is in the same conversation about speed as exotics like the Ferrari SF90 and Bugatti Chiron is an accomplishment the likes of which we haven't ever seen. At least not that I can remember. And that's before considering the price difference. Of course there are caveats upon caveats upon caveats from the durability of the brakes to the claims about top speed and full self-driving that may or may not ever happen. This is a Tesla after all. But taken as is, this plaid is truly revolutionary.